Show me what democracy looks like. Soon after Donald Trump was elected president, New York University students took to the street to protest his administration. Professors at the university responded to this increased interest in political activism by incorporating community organizing into their classes. Identity is produced by the friction between movies that arrest identity and Asian American movies that construct identity. Professor Sharon Lee teaches a class on Asian American film and documentary. Her class is focusing on Asian American visibility in the media. We had had a lot of students coming to our office hours and wanting just to talk things through. We spent certain classes talking about the current climate. And then we just circled around to the idea that it didn't feel right to just teach class as, as usual. We wanted to give our students the opportunity to do something, to be proactive to create something and to learn from each other. I wonder if that would be like a good example of like how Asians interact with other races in media as well. We really um, came up on the spot with this idea of a teach-in. So each of our classes would pick a topic that is important to them given the current climate and then teach the other classes about that topic. We, I think there's a lot of talk about coalition building and using that for solidarity and for like minority solidarity through this kind of like through this grouping that was created for Asian Americans. NYU senior Jeffrey Wu is excited to present in front of the other classes because of a perceived lack of Asian American involvement in activism. I feel like in a lot of discussions and a lot of discourse involving around like Asian Americans, there's like a lack of action. I feel like a lot of people talk and I, I talk with a lot of people about it, but no one ever take, turns that into something that's like actionable, that is like shareable, and does something tangible. And when I realized that we were going to turn what we were learning in class into something like real, I thought I was like, I was excited about it. And so uh, here you can see, like, here's YouTube, there's a couple of TV shows, and there's a product. Right While here. all the classes focus on activism of some sort, Professor Sharon Lee wants to make sure that her students understand the importance of the Asian American citizen's role in social justice specifically. I think Asian Americans are in a very specific racialized position in the U.S., right? We talk a lot about the model minority myth and how we're positioned as this model minority who doesn't need activism, right? Doesn't sort of need to ask for anything or doesn't need anything to be changed. Well, when you study Asian American history, Asian American contemporary politics, you, we know that that's not true. There are also many psychological effects that affect Asian Americans themselves due to um, the lack of visibility in the media. Many Asian American students cite discrimination as well as pressure due to succeed placed on them because of the model minority myth as a mental health stressor. Among females 15 through 24 years old, Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders have the highest rate of suicide deaths compared to other racial ethnic groups. Mm. Have you ever had a, a lunchbox moment experience and then talked about that? Mm. And then Professor Ray connected it to like the larger kind of like political analysis. Yeah. Um, I'm like For many Asian Americans, the journey to becoming an activist can be challenging. NYU senior Carolyn Fan is currently a member of the Asian Pacific American Bridge. This group organizes discussion around Asian American issues and invites Asian American voices on panels around campus. However, she wasn't always as involved. In high school, I was not comfortable with my Asian American identity at all. I definitely wanted to kind of hide it or go against it in a sense. Growing up in a predominantly white area, I think there's a very particular stereotype that you kind of feel like throughout your life that you're Asian American, you're from like this kind of like nice suburb, like outside of a city. Your parents work so hard to get you where you are, so you have to do really well. You have to be really smart, really good at math, really good at science that kind of like model minority stereotype and I never really had a word for it at a time. Um, but it was definitely something that I felt but never really understood. While Carolyn's disconnect from her identity held her back, activism wasn't on Jeffrey's mind for a completely different reason. The suburb where I grew up from was like next to Pasadena where the Rose Bowl is. It's like majority Asian in our high school. So if anything, I was like the majority, right? I feel like that privilege. Like I don't feel like I have a chip on my shoulder 
that like, I feel like other students do. The idea is, is that Asian Americans don't need help, right? They sort of figuring out, figure it out on their own um, and do so well that they will be successful. For both Carolyn and Jeffrey, activism became more of a focus after they moved from their suburban environments to Ten College in the big city. College, I think community service takes on a different lens where they look at it through a social justice aspect as well and learning about social justice, learning about like salient identities, diversity trainings, things like that, that really opened my eyes into kind of understanding my identity more. Like New York was the first time I encountered racism. You know, like no one's ever really like stopped me or made fun of me or, you know, profiled me based on my race. Becoming aware of social justice is only one problem Asian American activists face. For young activists, parents and older relatives often push back on their efforts. When I've brought up things like marches and rallies, they're really worried and, it, and against that sometimes. Um, like when I mentioned to my mom that I was going to the Women's March on Washington with APA Institute, she was like, oh no, like you can't go, like it's dangerous, like I don't understand why you want to like, you know, kind of stir things up, like you should feel really lucky to be where you are. And I totally understand where she's coming from. The challenge of parental pushback continues even beyond college. Ruben Ahn is the operations manager at the Coalition Against Asian American Violence. He spends his time advocating for Asian immigrant rights in New York City. Although his working class parents benefit directly from the work he does, they are not Overall, always supportive. Uh, my family members are like are interested in hearing about what I'm doing at my job because I think they just care about me and they're interested in what I'm, what I'm doing to, to make a living and, um, you know, sometimes they definitely wish I had more, like, well-paying aspirations and one thing that they say is we appreciate that you're trying to make a difference but in order to do that you need to have more power and for them power is a higher education or a more prestigious position. What are deliberate ways and deliberate efforts made by the Asian American community at being present and at being visible in media? And so what forms of protests have Asian Americans used to be visible and to be present? In particular, there's a protest through language and um, protest through language uh, regarding Asian Americans started specifically with the coining of the term Asian American as a rejection of the term Oriental. The teach-in gives students from different classes and different disciplines a chance to talk to and learn from each other. Professor Lee hopes that her students can use this information to organize and reach out to the community. We need to mobilize as many people as we can and, you know, intergenerational activism and organizing is really important. I've never actually, ha I've never done a class assignment where the entire class works together and that's essentially what organizing is, right? Is, is coming to consensus amongst a group of students, divvying up tasks. Um, some students take leadership roles, et cetera. And so we're hoping that we're giving students that opportunity, something new, to create di dialogues and networks and, and you know, maybe even just like make friends, you know, make sort of new um, connections. You're probably all wondering, so what can you do to help these problems? What can you do to help fix the situation? So I think one of the easiest ways to start off is by talking about these things with your friends and family. Like after the march, I wrote up an article about it, kind of talking about like my parents like trying to understand like why I want to be in activism and my family's background and things like that. And after they read that, their opinion changed a lot, I think. They kind of like understood where I was coming from. They even told me that my grandma, my father's side, used to be also like an activist and like a really huge feminist. Um, in China. So I think just me kind of explaining that this is something that I really feel for and I'm really passionate about, they're starting to understand like, why I would want to fight and kind of like continue what they fought for in their own way. Our groups might have our differences, but, but uh, it's just so much more powerful when we work together. Um, and I think, um, you know, we do this work because we also believe that, uh, you know, our organization's mission is to empower Asian Americans and Asian immigrants to be part of a larger um, fight for social justice. And I think what that means is advocating not for the things that exclusively like benefit just us, but um, benefit 
you know, benefit all people.